We're just about to head off from South Minerva Reef. Day one of the passage to Norfolk Island. We're just pulling up the anchor now. This is number one. That's number two. Number three's gone. Beautiful sunrise. Yeah. So we're going to sail out of the pass today. It's handy to have the sails up anyway in case something happens to the engine. We've always got a backup. That's where we are. One sail up. Pencil's up, we've just got to tighten it a bit. Mizzen's up, main up. Four sails up, we've just got to trim them a bit, but we're getting there. Let's get Wally sorted. Sails are sorted. Proudly flying our flag. Bye bye Minerva, you've been good to us. We've got a line in the water. Spanish mackerel please, or I'd settle for a mahi mahi. All right, let's get on course. You got anything to say, my darling? All I can say is South Minerva Reef. Sometimes we um, change our minds where we're going, like one minute we're going to Alaska, next minute we're in the South Pacific, etc, etc. And when you know it's just on the back deck now and we're trying to trim and get down to Norfolk Island and, and we looked at the weather for the next week or so on the fat weather facts and it looks like Sulla Lee so we're going to have to tack all the way there. And Wendy said, what are the options? I said, the other option is to sail directly to Australia or New Caledonia and she had this big smile came on her face when I said New Caledonia so I said right Wendy it's up to you where are we going and she said New Caledonia so we just happened to have all the money because the one reason we didn't want to go or we couldn't go there is because we're running out of funds um, but we got all the money left from when I, we checked out of French Polynesia, you have to put a bond for me, and so this is the bond money. So we've got enough money to check in to um, New Caledonia and maybe spend a week or so there. So it looks like, at the moment, it looks like we are heading, we're going to give up on the Norfolk Island idea and head to New Caledonia. So that's the plan this week. Stay tuned.
So what are you making for dinner, Wen? I'm making pizza, pan pizza. So I've just made the dough and I've rolled it out. Doing? Uh, reading Nigel's book. Um, he's like the guru of of, um, of boat maintenance books for cruisers. He um, he knows his stuff. And every now and then, I mean, I'm pretty cluey with electrical. That's what I do done for a living for most of my life. But every now and then, you just pick up little bits. You know, you just little bits that you either forgotten or. No one showed you. So I like to just read every now and then and just brush up and learn a bit while we're just cruising to New Caledonia. So I better go out and do a look around. The, the alarm just went off. So we're really flying this morning. We've got about, uh, what have we got, 19 knots of breeze. We haven't reefed yet. And um, we're doing between about uh, eight and nine knots, so uh, pretty happy with our speed. And we're nearly on the rum line, so uh, yeah, pretty happy. It's been a great night of sailing. We're about three days to go. We've been out of sea a couple of days and we thought we're just about to cross the Tropic of Capricorn so I thought oh, we'll have a little drinky post because we haven't, um, we like, always like to celebrate things and we don't have any rum or anything on board on a passage usually um, but we do have our homebrew wine so I thought oh well the last brew was pretty good I'll uh, get a glass of this brew so I got a glass, poured a glass here for Wendy right which is here and um, so she tried it, and now I'll pass you over to Wendy's description of the wine. Wendy, um, yep. you just tried the brew. Yep. Uh, what's your report? Well, I described it with four words to Magnus. Trying to one was yeasty. Brains, what the four words were. Oh yeah, one was plummy. Yeah. One was yeasty. Yeah. One was tarty. Yeah, the last the other, word. And the other one was off. Off. <laughs> it was off. Is that what I said? You off. did say that. So yeah, here's. It tasted off. Here's the brew. So I said Magnus had to try it. And uh, so I'll give it. A, I'll give it a crack. All right. So color wise, it's the color of. Um, it's a colour of burnt automatic transmission fluid. And to anyone out there who's ever had uh, uh, auto transmission go, um, they'll know what colour it is. And there's one thing even worse than that with auto trannies, is the smell of a burnt 
Trent, what a Trent, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was the wine coming to say hello and other things because it is quite, <laughs> quite rolly here. Um, so, right, anyone who's ever tried automatic, uh, smelled burnt automatic transmission fluid knows what that smell is like, but here goes, I'll give it a, I'll give the wine a try. That is disgusting, that's the most disgusting I've ever tasted. We went from 100% success with the first homemade boat wine. Whalers. We called it the Whalers Brew. Uh, to this swill. Oh, that is bad. That is, it's off. off. So we're gonna have we're gonna, now 10 liters of, of uh, drain cleaner. So that's going straight down the drain, I think. Or I might give it a better vintage, more than what's I had, had four weeks. So I'll give it another month, and if it doesn't improve, yeah, I'll let you know in a month. Oh, big wave! Uh, if you can only see the sea outside, it is, it's pretty rough. Um, yeah, so I'll let you know once we get back to Australia, it'll be about a month, what it tastes like. Cheers for now. We suddenly ran out of gas. So Magnus is up the front trying to work out how to fix it. Right, it's going to hospital. So what's going on, Meg? Uh, the solenoid is intermittent on the on the gas, and it's been intermittent for ages. And I looked everywhere, and every country we get to, we haven't been able to buy one. The brake is way inside there, so I'm going to have to try and sculpt, get this rubber away a bit. And resolder it, and then um, and then build up a new base here with silicon. Until in Australia, I can get these. Easy, like you get them anywhere, but haven't been able to get one all of Mexico and all of um, Pacific so far. So. Next job. See, it's a little bit corroded in there. There's a break in the wire. That's where we've got to fix it. There's not much room to solder in there. Well, I can see the pin, which is the main thing. You found the problem? Yeah. Easy fix. Find some good wire. Replace that bit of wire. Solder the new bit onto here. Clean this pin up. Resold a new bit of wire to it. Then we'll um, seal it all up with silicon, nice and safe, and um, we'll be good to go again. Yeah, I'm going to replace all this when we get back to Australia. New regulator, new switch, new gauge because the gauge doesn't even work, and uh, put in a proper one of these Australian version, which has got a rubber O-ring in there, which seals a lot better. Because this is that worn over the years that I've, I've, every time I put it into a bottle, I've got to put some thread tape on to seal it. So, replace that when we get down Australia and we'll be safe again. Nice marine grade tin copper wire. Look at that, that is beautiful. That is nice wire, quality, old school stuff. So it's gonna solder onto there, like so, and then we'll seal that, good to go. Can't wait to get my soldering iron from home on board. Butane gas powered and it just, it'll make short work of all this. This one doesn't really get that hot. Oh, that's hot.
So now that the silicon is cured, I'm just gonna double safety it with some butyl tape. Electrician's best friend in the marine industry. So we're just gonna get this butyl tape on here and keep that'll keep any liquids out. And it'll be all good. Couple of connectors on there, and we'll be good to go. Oh, a bit rolly rolly. So, we've got these really nice, um, whoops, hate it when that happens. We've got these really nice crimp links, which um, I'll put in with some uh, grease, and then the, the heat shrink clothes, and they form a really good seal. And then we'll put some uh, heat shrink with epoxy in it over the top. You good to go. Now, some of you might have crimps like this and not know that you can only crimp a terminal one direction. <laughs> like for example, if I was to crimp now, it would be correct. But if I was to crimp, turn it around and crimp now, it's incorrect. Because what you've got in here, you've got a stepped crimp jaw so that the uh, right hand side of the jaw forms a harder crimp than the left hand side of the jaw so what you want is a harder crimp side which is the right hand side furthest away from the wire so when you're crimping you want the hard crimp part of the crimp to be towards the middle of the crimp right so when i crimp this now it's going to crimp the center of the wire into the ferrule and it's going to do a lighter crimp on the insulator insulator part of the wire so just in case any of you have got these crimps and not known that fact it makes a real big difference to the uh, quality of your crimp so now we're going to crimp this wire we're going to have the tight the small part of the crimp towards the middle of the crimping pliers towards the middle so when we do our crimp, as such, it does a hard crimp there on the on the uh, copper tinned copper ferrule, and it does a softer crimp on the outside on the insulation. So now I'll shrink that down with the uh, our painted heat shrink gun, and uh, we'll go outside and do the same out there. All right. So now, can you grab the painted heat shrink gun, please? Sure. So is that your patented um, tool? Yeah. So what we'll do, once we do this outside, um, I've got some heat shrink here which is epoxy filled. So you've got your normal heat, normal heat shrink, which I'll show you the difference for those of you that don't know. Some might not even know what heat shrink is. Heat shrink is uh, electri marine electrician's third best friend. It um, we shrink down to 50% of its size, so we can slide. To say this is, you wouldn't use this size. You'd use uh, <coughs> other sizes in the bag here to go over this. Actually, this size will do. So it goes over there, and then when you heat that up, it shrinks down and seals it. And inside here, it's uh, lined with epoxy. So as you heat that up, the epoxy melts and it forms a 100% waterproof bond around it. But you have two sorts, like this one here, that's not epoxy filled. So that's not for outdoor use, that's just for indoor use. Um, so there are two different sorts. Taking all the gear out the front. Yep, and we're gonna finish the job out there. And then we can make a cup of coffee. Yeah, all this just for cuppa. But coffee is important in the morning, it's my It'll be my fourth cup this morning because I've done an all-nighter. Wendy slept all night and I he's, worked all night. He's a, a doll. So she deserves it. She cooked a wonderful meal last night. So I figured, yeah, she can sleep all night and I'll just sit up here and read books. So I read about eight books. Um, but I'll fix this, have a cup of coffee, and then it's bedtime. You won't need your light out there, darling. <laughs> I'm just so used to having And it's on! I'm way ahead. <laughs> hours a day. There you go. Oh, thank you. Running repairs. There's always something to fix. All right. Well, we'll see if that works. Let's give it a try.
Yeehaw! We're trying to get to uh, Numea, but the wind has shifted now. It's coming from the north. It's added about another day. So we're expecting the wind to drop tomorrow to virtually nothing. But we'll see how we go. If we don't make New Caledonia, then we'll keep going to Australia. That's sailing. It's windy. 37 knots at the moment. I've just put a second reef, or put a reef in the main because we were dipping our rails a bit. Um, like, pretty unusual for this to dip a rail that we were going to put under. So it just, the squall just hit us. So I'm just going to put a tack in and go back that way. Give her a tack. Oh, caught a fish too. The wind's definitely picked up. How fast are we going now? About 20. When yeah. now, yeah. Uh, 25. 25. Was 37. Yeah, from zero to 37. Bang. Speed up. Do a seven knots. It's about a better heading, straight for Yumea now. 135 miles, but straight for Yumea. That's a lot nicer. We haven't been on this tack for at least a day. So she's pretty easy to get about, this big old girl. Everything happens in slow motion. Now, after a tack, we've got to tidy up everything. Right, what's going on, darling? Going on, um, we are hundreds of miles from anywhere and in the middle of the Pacific and it's calm, would be calm. It's night, so you can't really see out there. Um, so I said, when are you going to barbecue? I caught this beautiful snapper the other day at Minerva Reef. What is it? <laughs> what is that? It's yummy, it's dinner. And so we're just going to cook it up on the barbie. So tell me about the sails. Well, as you can see, we've got a staysail, a mainsail, and a mizzen up, and they're just full. And you see here, the mainsail is back. In other words, the center point here on the boom is on the windward side of the center line of the boat. So that's called backing the sail. So the sail's working, if you like, backwards. What it does, it creates a situation where the boat's trying to go forward in the wind. And because the wheel is hard over, so that's turned hard over up into the wind. So we're trying to turn into the wind. The boat's trying to sail into the wind, um, but it can't, so it keeps falling off the wind and then tries to sail in, but this all happens in microscopic pieces. And so you're sitting still. So we're, actually, we're doing 0.1 nautical miles at the moment. Yeah, we're in a null situation if you like. Uh, we're not going forwards, backwards, we're going slightly sideways. But we're trying to get to the um, New Caledonia which is about 150 miles away. It's been 150 miles away for the last two days. We've just not had any real wind. Well we have but it's been right on the nose. So the wind's coming from there at the moment and that's exactly where New Caledonia is. We don't like the motor. So yeah. Anyway, catch you later. Big down. This King Phil King Snapper fillets. That's dinner. Sizzling away there nicely. And that's our sunset. I didn't get it on the camera, but what a beautiful sunset tonight. And here we are in the middle of middle of the big blue. Right oh. Turn these babies over. This is quickly becoming my new favourite fish. King Snapper is absolutely beautiful. Listen to 
couple of minutes on one side, and I'll give it a minute on this side. And then, they will be ready to go. You've been busy down here, when? Yeah, so we're in the middle of the Pacific. And um, this is dinner. We've got barbecue this. grilled fish, little whatever, roasted potatoes and the carrot oh, and goodness. pumpkin. We're just trying to eat up all the fresh stuff that we'll yeah. um, otherwise have to turn into customs from quarantine. So, yeah. Well done. Go roast. Yeah, a little roast in the middle of the It's not even city. Sunday. No. <laughs> See ya.